Hey guys, in this video I'm going to interview my friend Vern who had to leave the Philippines and is now residing in Turkey. What does he think of Turkey? How does he like it? Stay tuned. So yeah, you're, you, you get to Turkey, um, you land in the airport. Uh, what are your first impressions? Uh, English being spoken, English signs, how difficult was that whole landing there and, and going? All right. Well, I took Turkish Airlines and the plane that we were on, I think it was a seven, I want to say like a 727-9. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the seats were really narrow. And, and the people that were on this flight, man, they were like football stars. They were huge. These people that were next to me, in front of me, this there's some big people here. It's, it's not like uh, in, in Asia where everybody's a little bit smaller framed. There's some big people. And wow. so riding in these tiny, tiny little tours with these huge tours was kind of not too, too comfortable for the flight. So that really stuck into my head. And well, so we sorry. landed. The flight was fairly uneventful. Uh, sorry, yeah. Vern, you, you froze there. So uh -huh. you, you said you're, they're big guys and you get into what? One more time. You, you get into these, these really small airplane seats. They're really small. They're like, they should be in Asia or Japan. And so you're on this long flight. I think it was, I want to say it was 14 hours, but it may have been as short as 11 hours. I, I, I can't remember exactly. I didn't pay too much of time. And the time zones change. So it's five hours uh, behind Asia. Okay. So I kind of not exactly sure at this point. But anyway, there, there are big people here. And like huge Roman gladiator type. I mean, these people yeah. are massive, uh, you know, e easy six foot plus people. And so wow. we're riding in this, this plane with these superstar giants <laughs> and we're all kind of crammed in together. And there was one huge guy in front of me and, huh. and another huge guy said, Hey, I need to sit, sit next to you. And the guy goes, really? <laughs> Cause there was no COVID spacing within the center seats. And I'm thinking, this is, this is bizarre because all the other seats, they had like one space, one, and then they, they jammed us all together. So I don't mm -hmm. know what happened there. But uh, other than that, it was, it was fairly uncomfortable, but we got through it. Um, what, what was different was the foods that they served were mostly like sandwiches for the dinner, for the lunch, mm -hmm. um, a lot of bread type meals, okay. kind of like a pita bread, which was kind of different. But then when we got here um, and we landed, the airport's amazing. It's, it's oh. completely amazing. It, it could be in any first world. It, it is so impressive. It's a beautiful airport. Wow. And what surprised me the most about Turkey is it is on par with the quality in, in, in the big cities that I've been to with mm -hmm. any place in the U.S. I mean, it's it, the roads coming to the hotel were mm -hmm. perfect. They were like any major highway and they were smooth. They were nice. They were uh, of the best quality road that you could expect. Sure. So the infrastructure here um, is, is really high end. How about uh, English when you landed and you're having to communicate any problems with English so far? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, there was a lot of problems with English. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, you get off the plane, you're dog tired, right? Mm -hmm. And just like if you landed in LA, you've got all these long corridors you need to go down. And if you can read English, fine, you know where you're going. And at the time, I wasn't sure if I needed to go through immigration first mm -hmm. or if I needed to get my bag first. But through here, you need to go through immigration, then you can get your bag. Usually you grab your bag and then you go through immigration. Right. And so I'm kind of confused, you know, I'm tired, I'm jet lagged and I'm looking around. And so I walk off the tram, the walking tram and I, I look at somebody, I'm like, hey, do you know where this place is, where that is? And they kind of look at me and then they walk away. <laughs> like this isn't gonna work, you know? So I kind of went through a lot of that and mm -hmm. The, the problem is when you come here, you need to be on uh, some kind of like a Google Translate. But if you don't have signal, if you're not locked into their system or you're not on some roaming, 
You're not going to have a signal. Oh. Now, I think my phone, I, I didn't, let's see, did I have Google Translate? Anyway, there was something that was missing where I was still having problems, but Usually you can find somebody that knows a little English to help, but sure. you're, you're at a huge disadvantage. You're just at a huge disadvantage. And um, it, 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 yeah, that's about all I can say. It's, <laughs> it's not as easy as, as, as you would think. Sure. And, and, and that's anywhere that I've been here, even in the tourist areas. Uh, okay. So, so, so that's a, a huge advantage in the Philippines. Um, we always totally. look back. Yeah. And I think that's a huge draw to the Philippines too, for a lot of people. Yes, so. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Because if foreigners want to complain, they can complain in English and get understood right, in right. English. <laughs> Pretty so, much. Uh, right. If you got any issues here, you're talking to yourself. It's just like saying because that's all they're hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mm -hmm. got into your Airbnb. Um, Pretty, pretty nice quality seem to be better than the Philippines or as far as infrastructure, as far as you can see, seems to be. For this, for this price, yeah, it's, it, it's a little better, but it's similar at this price. You, you have to think that I am not in a five-star place. I'm in hmm. probably, mm, I don't know, probably a three-star place. And it's in, a, it's in a little bit older part of the city. Mm-hmm. And let's see, and it's, it's not on the main beautification type area. So it, it, it's just, it's close, but it's budget. Sure. For me, I, it, for a long stay, I wanted budget. And I, I started yeah. out not knowing the area I'd be in or mm -hmm. what I would expect, but it, it, it's enough for me. I, I stayed in some <laughs> pretty crazy places before and it's yeah, not yeah. that crazy. So, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, you've booked, initially you've booked one month at this place? Or initially you... I booked one week and then one I went week. and then I just went and did a month because everybody has said, if you come here, mm -hmm. just a week is not enough. Sure. And so I like to kind of go slow. I take, I don't, I don't just like run to this area, run to that area, run, you know, I'm kind of like, I want to yeah. go slow. So do that's kind of where it's at. You think you'll stay in Istanbul or do you think you might? try out a different location or just maybe a different part of Istanbul later? Well, you know, I'm so close to everything here. It's within walking distance of the railway. It's in walking distance. It's the bus is right out the front door. So it, it's a perfect place um, to launch from if you want to day trip mm -hmm. or go somewhere else and, and maybe spend a night somewhere and just keep this as your hub. And okay. so I'm going to stay here for a month mm -hmm. and then I'm going to head south to uh, what's the name of that place. Um, it, it's by the old Ephesus. I don't have a map in front of me, but um, okay. it, it's probably about an eight hours south of, of Istanbul. I'm going to go stay there for a month and then kind of play it out and figure out where I want to stay. Cause like I say, I have 90 days um, and I'm in no hurry. So now you've been in Turkey about a week now. Is that about right? About one week. One yep, week. One okay. Week. So I, I know you can't give a bunch of accurate info, but in the one week that you've been there, like as far as cost as like, like buses and taxis and food, what, what are your, what kind of price ranges do you see? Is it cheap? Well, it, to me, it seems very similar to the Philippines. Okay. You know, I, I went to McDonald's and I had not McDonald's, but Burger King. I, I'm kind of into this mode where I want to suck up some fast food from back home in places yeah. that I haven't had the options to because like, I kind of miss some of those flavors and tastes. So funny enough, uh, I went to Burger King and I had their, their Roadhouse <laughs> Deluxe Steak Burger. And at that price, it was like, I want to say 29 lira and it's $1 to 7 lira. So you're looking at around a $4 burger, you know? Okay. And I think that would probably cost what, eight bucks, nine bucks back home, that roadhouse burger, that deluxe burger. <laughs> so, Possibly, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's probably the same price as it would be back in the Philippines. Buses and taxis, cheap or? Yeah, yeah, they're pretty cheap. I, I took a taxi um, 
well, not too far from here, actually. <laughs> now that I think about it, maybe it wasn't so cheap. He charged me 20 lira, and I could have walked here, but I had a big suitcase. Oh, okay. um, so that's the only taxi. Now, you got to be really, really careful with the taxis, because even if they have a meter, they still want to push no meter. And, and yeah, then they yeah. play the no language game. So sure. uh, you're, you're, you're at a really big disadvantage. You need to have Google and, yeah. and Google Translate. And so um, it, it, if, if you've traveled to, like, say, Manila Airport, and mm -hmm. you know the big games there, yeah, and yeah. they know the hustle, and they know how to work it, it's exactly the same hustle here. So be on your game, because they know how to play. Yeah. They know how to play. Mm. So, so I don't really know the price. And they mm -hmm. say that if you're going to come here, buy a railway. Uh, they have what's called a package um, travel pass. I think it's for buses, railways, and trams. And mm -hmm. I was told if you don't buy it, it will be about double the price to travel. So I'm yeah. about to buy that maybe tomorrow, and then I'll know more what the price on that, that pass is. Mm. Now, um, t Turkey is actually known for it. it's just fantastic food. Have you tried some of the local cuisine? I did try some of the food. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tried some of the wraps. Uh, okay. But what, what kind of surprised me is this is supposed to be like the spice capital or area of, of where East meets uh, where, where Europe meets Asia, I right. guess you'd say East meets West. And the foods that I had were kind of bland. They really? were lacking spice. But the quality of the food and the, the, uh, the freshness was perfect. It was really good. And I'm not sure if they're making foods to bring out the flavors of the natural ingredients or if there is both. I'm still trying to find... Um, the taste, the flavor, the mm -hmm. the food that's here is it is it is it a little bland? Is it spicy? Am I not yeah. going to the right places? I just haven't had enough food yet to know. And the other thing is, that there's so much diverse culture here from so many places. Um, the place I'm at, it's it's like an Iranian place. It's all Iranian, oh. and so if you go to the Walking Street, you might end up eating it at, at an Iranian place where you might think you're eating at a Turkish place. So. Hmm. Yeah, to know where the local cuisine is and, and where hmm. that is, that's that's going to be a little bit of a challenge okay. with no guide. So, Well, you just did a, a really cool video. I, I really enjoyed it. You, were, you met up with two Turkish girls, I think randomly, um, and I thought that was really cool. So if you guys want to see that video, mm -hmm. um, again, check out Vern's channel in my description. But uh, how, how did you run into these two girls? I mean, can you explain that? <laughs> Well, you, you can even see it on the street. You know, it's funny. As I look back at the video, mm -hmm. I was walking down the street and then I stopped and I said, all right, I'm going to give you a shot behind me. So I panned the camera back and mm -hmm. these two girls walk up the street and I, I, and I walk a little bit and I turn the corner mm -hmm. and then I see these mannequins and I, I like doing photography of mannequins. I don't know. It's just a weird thing I like to do. <laughs> sure. And so I kind of paused. I did some mannequin photos I turned and there were these two girls and I was just, it had these questions in my mind and they were right there. And I just started asking the questions and they said, Hey, we're headed this way. Would you like to come for coffee and, and experience some of Turkey? And I said, yeah, I'd love to. So yeah, they wow. were just that friendly. So yeah. Amazing. And yeah. Um, how do you think, I mean, again, you've only been here a week. I, I don't expect you to fully know, but what do you think dating would be like for a Westerner? Do you think it's possible in Turkey or that's not so good probably? You know, that, that's a good question. I, I looked at the local Tinder app mm -hmm. because a guy had asked me, he said, check out Tinder. And what was really weird for many of the girls that were on there, they were like dressed to the nines and they had the glasses of champagne and they were like on these <laughs> yachts and hey, and I thought... I'm just a simple guy. If I were to date and I see these girls, I'm thinking I'm not up to their level. <laughs> so I'm like, is this even an option? Yeah. And then after, this was my first time on Tinder even looking at it. So after scrolling for a lot of time, I was able to find more modest, simple, uh, easy to approach girls. And so, you know, it, it, it is probably here, but this is kind of like the LA of 
of, of Turkey. This is their Istanbul. Now, if I were to drop in LA and mm -hmm. I tried to date on, you know, one of the really fancy boulevards, it would probably be the same kind <laughs> of a scenario. So right, right. I think one needs to go outside the city to go outside maybe the biggest city and then get a big feel for it. The girls right. that I chatted, they were as sweet as you could have asked. They were super, super nice, super personable, uh, very comfortable and easy to talk to. So I think anything could be found here, but okay. you don't have the, oh, he's exotic. Oh, it, right, like right. you do in Asia. You, people yeah. tell that I'm not from here, but they don't really know much more past that. So gotcha. uh, yeah, you, you don't have... And, and maybe it's different if I went outside the city here, you mm -hmm. get a lot of foreigners, so you're not going to be as, as unique, but maybe outside the countryside, sure. it would be better. So that's a good question. I'm curious to figure that out. We'll have yeah. to, we'll have to get an update from you later. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, okay. So in the Philippines, you were always a casual dresser as, as are uh, most of us, right? We're kind of t-shirts and shorts. It's just that kind of vibe. Now, when I was watching your video, I was noticing people were pretty nicely dressed. Um, do, you, do you feel a little out of place walking around? You know, like I say, this is the Hollywood of, of that area, right? So people yeah. are really nicely dressed. They are out on the town. This is their, hey, let's go out for dinner place. You know, I'm gonna dress nice and we're gonna go out. But then again, there are people that are just casual. Now, being dress code, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. When I was researching on Turkey, there was one guy that said, oh, everybody wears pants here and I wouldn't be seen not wearing jeans in Turkey. And so I get here and all these people are wearing shorts and I'm like, what? And I asked the girls the same question and they said, yeah, there's no problem. Girls wearing short shorts or half shorts, you know, from oh, the knees up. It's, yeah. And you wouldn't think that because in our minds, we're often taught that this is such a modest culture, but in this yeah. area, it's, it's, it's not as conservative, I think. So uh, it, it's, it's really a shock to see that, but yeah, I did. I, I did feel a little out of place, but that's all I brought. You know, I brought my casual clothes from the Philippines and my luggage right. is loaded up. So it's not like I can buy a whole ton of gear right now right. unless I want to carry an extra bag around. So, sure. yeah, but it is starting to get cooler here. I can feel it every night. It's just, it's just a little bit cooler, a little bit cooler. You can tell the seasons are changing. So I'm going to have to buy some warmer gear at some mm. point. That'll be uh, another video for you, I think. Mm, mm. shopping because um, the turkey's famous for their bazaars you know they're shopping uh like their turkish bazaars uh shopping so that'd be a fantastic video i think yeah i i'm headed to that area i'm headed to old uh constantinople i'm headed to that region maybe tomorrow yeah. it looks really overcast today but i'm gonna try to do that i wanted to put my drone up but mm there's so much police presence here. I don't want to get that thing taken away. Right. So my video might be more restricted to on the land in this area, but yeah, they're really known for shopping and it, it seems like there's a lot of money here mm -hmm. and there's no, uh, there, there's no shortage of places to shop. That's for darn sure. So you can shop until you drop here. Literally. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, Constantinople or Turkey used to be part of the Roman Empire all the way to like 1453. So the old city name was Constantinople. And uh, so I think maybe they kind of absorbed a little bit of uh, that Roman culture a little bit. Maybe that's why they're more, uh, I guess, less, uh, I don't know what the word is, but uh, a little less... Uh, Conservative, maybe, I guess. I don't know. Right. <laughs> and some people had said that parts of Turkey are more European than Europe. So right. it's kind of an interesting thing. You're right. And it always has been a hub of different cultures yeah. for centuries. Right. Exactly. So, mm. well, awesome, Verna. This has been uh, a lot of fun, and I appreciate you uh, doing the interview. 
And uh, again, guys, check out uh, Hey Vern yeah. Philippines down in the description, or as of right now, it's Hey Vern Turkey. <laughs> but the channel is Hey Vern Philippines. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Uh, it's Vern on vacation right now. Hey, Vern Philippines on vacation. <laughs> there you go. There you For go. How long? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. We'll see. Ho hopefully not too long. So. Right. Well. Okay. Thanks, Gio. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Take care, Vern. Be safe.